the Buffalo. So I actually said the Bills, but um, based on, I understand that you could say the Chiefs because Patrick Mahomes, he's wonderful. He leads, it, uh, since he's entered the league in 2018, he leads every statistical category there is for quarterbacks. But my answer is actually the Bills. Now we have to get to the I bottom of it. I don't know what happened, but just Bills, Josh Allen, they're my Super Bowl picks. So On my script, moments. it says you picked the Chiefs. Uh, we will get to the bottom of this in the meeting. Meanwhile, Ninko, let's go to Pittsburgh. Who should be the starting quarterback, Trubisky or Pickett? I'm going Trubisky. Let the kids sit. Give them time. Beginning of this week, Jimmy Garoppolo in San Francisco agreeing on a one-year restructured contract that'll keep him with the 49ers for this season, we would assume. Now, he could still be traded before the deadline. But for now, Garoppolo is Trey Lance's backup, and Kyle Shanahan was talking yesterday about how Lance took the news. Trey was great. I mean, there was no, there was no problems with it at all. I mean, I, was, I told him the exact same things that I told Jimmy. Um, why we were the options of bringing Jimmy here, that it had to be in a, a backup type deal, um, which um, Jimmy knew that was his option. And that was the only option. I mean, Trey and Jimmy have a great relationship. I think Trey, I, Trey actually likes having Jimmy in the building. And Trey was very grateful to how Jimmy was to him last year. And we feel very strongly from the two people that Jimmy will um, give that back to Trey this year. All right, Kimberly, I didn't have you here yesterday. This was painted by most, I feel, as a win-win mm -hmm. for San Francisco. Do you right? see it that way? Uh, it depends on who you talk to, Greeny. Because if you talk to the 49ers, which I have, they feel really good. They've all along have said there's no drama in this building, even when Jimmy was practicing over on a separate field, not with the team during training camp. Everybody, clear lines have been drawn. When you talk to people around the league, the skepticism is... Okay, so we went with wanting to get rid of Jimmy and that cloud of suspicion over how do we feel about Trey. So Jimmy knows this is Trey's team. Now we move forward three, a few months and Jimmy's still here. That cloud is still hanging over everything. I think it makes sense for Jimmy G from the standpoint of you're back with the organization that you wanted to be with. You know this roster. You know this coaching staff, a great coaching staff. And you know that you've had success here. But the 49ers, I think if this were done by another team, let's say your Jets or mm -hmm. some other team or Washington or, uh, you know, like we'd be looking around like, what are they doing there? Um, and, and it seems to the narrative of we want to turn the page has quickly turned to, hey, we're all back together. This is great. <laughs> right. It's wonderful. Look at us. I actually felt they should have kept Jimmy. I was not a fan of moving on from Jimmy because the, he's so important as a backup. But I understood that you want to clear the runway for Trey Lance and not have any question about Jimmy G. Well, look, and, and that has to be Jimmy G not having those questions because he's one of the 32 best quarterbacks mm -hmm. in the world. So he should be starting somewhere. And yes. I understand his feeling that way. But here's the scenario that we live with. Look, I think Trey Lance has a chance to be an unbelievably good player. The talent is ridiculous and the, the, the second setup is good for him there. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, over the last two years, he's only started one more game than I have. So the question, <laughs> Ninko, becomes, if we're three weeks into this season, four weeks into the season, and he is going through growing pains, and you're a nine- or ten-year veteran in that locker room, as you once upon a time were in your own locker room and a team leader, are you walking into the coach's office? And if so, what are you saying? Yeah, you're going. You're you're wanting to sit down with the coach, and you want to you want an explanation on why we're in the position of losing football games to help a young guy advance and have more experience. When you have a, a guy like Jimmy G, who has won playoff games, who has been in big moments, who has a 71% winning percentage. So again, there's going to be issues that come up this year. But I would say that. Having Jimmy G behind a young quarterback is great for the 49ers because they have the confidence and the players on the team have the confidence knowing no matter who we if we have the young guy or if we have the old guy we're going to have a chance. Sometimes when you have a backup and you know you don't have a chance with that backup it's almost like deflating the, the pop in the balloon. It's like deflating but if anything happens to the number one quarterback right now everybody in that building has confidence in the number two.
All right, we'll see. I mean, that, that obviously, well, that's the win-win piece of this thing. I think this thing is terrific until it isn't, and let's exactly. hope they never get to that point. As we continue in just a moment, Mike Tomlin may have made a decision on his starting quarterback, but he's not telling anybody what it is. So who is going to, and the marquee Sunday night matchup week one will be Cowboys Buccaneers. Yesterday, in his weekly radio appearance, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones talked about his team's narrative heading into the season. I think that uh, we did. We came up short, and uh, I don't want to dwell on it, but I do want to burn it in our minds. I, I like that, uh, continually reminding that uh, we need to not only get in the playoffs, but we need to get way deep into the playoffs so we got a chance. Uh, I think this team is reflecting that. So that is the narrative. Mm -hmm. Get in a better spot to stay longer in the playoffs. All right, so he's definitely putting the pressure on. A Caesar Sportsbook thinks Dallas is the favorite to win the NFC East for the second straight year. They have the fifth shortest odds to win the conference. It's around they haven't reached since winning the whole thing back in the 1995 season. That history is obviously very well documented. Jerry Jones has been there for every day of it. In fact, he is the only thread of commonality through all of it. So where does this leave us? Kmart, as we listen to Jerry Jones and his thoughts here, what does it make us think? What more can Jerry say? This is him putting his team on notice, right? But the only, but I don't understand how anyone can feel this is the best Cowboys team or the Cowboys are in the best position. The only reason we're optimistic about the Cowboys is because of their quarterback, Dak Prescott, and because they play in the NFC East. That's why they're the favorite to win the division because we don't know about Jalen Hurts yet. But uh, every year, I think we just we keep expecting the Cowboys to live up to the, the billing of America's team. And each year, they find another way to disappoint. And Jerry, I mean, aside from saying Mike McCarthy is out of a job unless he wins, that's what he's saying. Well, I, I, I'd like to push back on pieces of that, but let me get Nink in here first quickly. When Jerry Jones puts the pressure on this team, he says this is a team that is ready to stay in the playoffs, stay longer in the playoffs, get deep into the playoffs. Is it, Ninko, is this a team that is ready to do that? I, I don't think so. I, I think that Jerry Jones is, is hes saying exactly what he's supposed to say as the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. If, if a player turns on the television and you see Jerry Jones say, well, uh, you know, the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> I expect uh, to, to, to be a second to the, the Philadelphia Eagles. And, uh, you know, the, this playoff run because of our offensive line struggles and our, <laughs> our receiving core is a lot less uh, stacked as they were last year. Like, he's not going to say that. He's going to say, exactly. we're ready to go. We're, we got the quarterback. We got, we got the running backs. Uh, mm -hmm. He's going to say all that stuff. So, again, he's boosted his team up. He's trying to give him some confidence. But in the back of the head, he probably, he probably knows they're going to struggle a little bit. Well, okay. Struggle a little bit is reasonable. I agree. I don't think they are a juggernaut. But, Kimberly, if you what you basically just said is the only reasons we believe in the Cowboys are because of the quarterback and the division. Mm -hmm. If I said to you the only reasons we believe in the Green Bay Packers are because of the quarterback and the division, mm -hmm. that wouldn't sound so crazy. Now, I understand Dak Prescott is not Aaron Rodgers. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to say he is. Right. But generally, if you have a great quarterback and you play in a bad division, that usually is the formula for winning the division, right? Right, except when you look <clears throat> at the rest of the division, you look at the NFC North. Like, the rest of the rosters don't scare you the same way. If you're the Packers, they, they haven't scared you in a long time. The Eagles literally have done absolutely everything they can this offseason to say we are all in. Their biggest question mark is their quarterback, and maybe very soon we won't have a lot of questions about Jalen Hurts. But outside of the offensive line, you're looking at Dak. He's coming off injury. He's healthy now, but that offensive line, that has to do with the running game, the quarterback, like like everything. The, the wide receivers, like there's no Amari Cooper. Michael Gallup still not there. Washington still not there. You're expecting CeeDee Lamb to take that next step, but you haven't seen it. There are a lot of question marks for a team that has poured so much money into key positions that we shouldn't be talking about the Dallas Cowboys as a question mark. The, I understand that, but if I were to say to you that I think that this is a team that last year actually maybe significantly underachieved, and yeah. I know they've lost a piece or two, but Rob Ninkovich, this is a team, and, and I'm just, there's no other really nice, there's no nice way to say it. This was a badly coached football team last year. They had the most penalties for the most yards of any teams in the sport. They had clock management issues. It felt like every
every single week. One week the coach couldn't see the clock. Who's the head coach, though? And, and their season ended. Well, that, I understand that. But my point is, if they either, A, get some of that cleaned up, or mm -hmm. B, change that, mm -hmm. that might wind up actually being their ticket to success. Because I think, whereas the Cowboys are usually overrated going right. into seasons because of all their fans, maybe because of some of those factors, Nico, we are understating how good some of the players on this team are. Well, listen, they, they are a talented roster. They got a great quarterback. I, I think that you said it. It's the discipline. It's the coaching. It's the penalties. Those things, I said it yesterday. Discipline isn't something that you just snap your fingers, flip the light switch, and it's automatically there. It's something that you have to work on every day, in practice, every week, and every month. It's something that gains momentum is it, to have a disciplined football team. The discipline issues... Just like I said yesterday, I'd have a six-pack pack if I had more discipline. <laughs> that stuff doesn't happen like that. No, it's stuff that you do every